Jane! Jane! Yes, what is it, honey? What's this dotted line on the map of the world? Dotted line? Oh, that's the international date line. Isn't that wonderful getting the boys and girls from different countries to go out with each other? <laughs> well, that's what you can expect when you listen to my friend Irma. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. Theirs will still be hot. Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend presents. Our friend Swan. With my friend Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. happened to me, Jane Stacy, shouldn't happen to a dog. A big one. A little one couldn't handle it. <laughs> you see, my boss and the guy I'm in love with, Richard Rhinelander, has suddenly decided to go to England on business. He says it's business. And there's no reason to doubt him, except that his mother and father look so happy about his leaving me. Why, I don't know. I'm just an innocent bystander. Perhaps they're under the impression that I want to get engaged to him. They're wrong. I just want to marry him. <laughs> What's more, let's face it, I don't mind shipping our money out of the country to help. I'm in favor of that, but it's going too far when they ship our men. But then that's the problem. Richard's sailing on the Queen Mary, so today I'm moping around. And I'm not eating. Lost my appetite. Think for lunch I'll put a little salt on my heart and eat it with a dry piece of Melba toast. <laughs> Oh, Jane, I have a feeling you're upset, aren't you? Me upset? Oh, don't be silly. <sighs> the only reason I'm shaking like this is because I'm getting ready to make a malted milk. <laughs> oh, Jane, now I know why you're so nervous. You're thinking about Richard going to England, aren't you? Yes, Irma. Even though he hasn't left yet, I miss him already. You know, he's going to be over 3,000 miles across the ocean. Well, it could be worse. Worse? How could it be worse? If he only went 2,000 miles, he'd drown. <laughs> well, I hope he does. Oh, what am I saying? Oh, Jane, listen to me. I'm your oldest friend, and this trip might be very good for both of you. Now you can find out how much you miss each other. Yeah, yeah, there's something to that. They say that separation is a great test. I'd like to believe. Well, it certainly is. Once Al and I were separated and we had a miserable time. Where did Al go? Nowhere. We were in the movies and a woman was sitting between us. <laughs> I know what it is to suffer. Yeah. I can imagine having to split a bag of popcorn three ways. <laughs> Hello. Oh, it's you, Richard. Oh, Richard, why must you go? Why don't you send your father instead? He'd love the trip, the old dear. <laughs> you have to go, but you love me. Oh, that's sweet. Sure, I'll come down to see you off. I... What? You want Irma and Al and Mrs. O'Reilly and the professor to come too? Well, that's nice of you, Richard, but it's not necessary, honestly. You want them to come. All right, dear, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Tell us what, Jane? What do you think, sweetie? Richard's invited the whole gang to see him off on the boat tomorrow night. A bon voyage party in his stateroom. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I, I think I'll wear slacks. Slacks? Yes, Jane, if I fall off the boat, someone will yell, man overboard, and if I'm wearing a dress, I can drown while I'm looking for the man. <laughs> well... Don't worry, honey. You won't fall overboard. Gee. You know, I hope Richard doesn't fall in love with any of those English girls. Oh, don't worry, Jane. Richard wouldn't fall for any of those English girls. They're all bow-legged. Bow-legged? Yes, they say a lot of them are cockneyed. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for straightening me out, honey. And I suppose they're all so poor they have to live in the House of Commons. Well, Jane, I, I don't know anything about their real estate. 
<laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little teapots. One with a fancy top, one with a loose lid. <laughs> a little joke I picked up in the gypsy tea room. Professor, you know, I don't know what it is, but you look so different. Huh? Yes, it's your eyebrows. I've never seen them so bushy. Bushy? Huh. Where's a mirror? Well, how do you like that? What can it be? Now I know. Last night when I kissed Mrs. O'Reilly, I must have slipped. These are her eyelashes. Well, you shouldn't steal kisses in the dark. Who would kiss her in the daytime? <laughs> with me, it's night madness. Tell me, Janie, what are you going to do with yourself while Richard's away? Oh, I'll keep busy. Incidentally, Professor, you're invited to Richard's farewell party on the Queen Mary. The Queen Mary? Mm-hmm. And what a boat. It's really a hotel on water. Well, to me, that's no novelty. When it rains, my room has the same features. <laughs> but I'll go and wish Richard good luck. Come in. Hello, Miss O'Reilly. Girls, have you some aspirin? I think I'm getting a cold in my head. Of course, it can be my imagination. It's not your imagination. Here are your eyelashes. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Professor. Girls, lately he's been so sweet to me. For instance, last night we had a snack in the kitchen and he turned out the lights and held my hand. <laughs> was that your hand? I was reaching for the pickles. <laughs> I'll go along with you, Professor. Uh, Janie, when does Richard leave for England? Tomorrow night, Mrs. O'Reilly, and you're invited to his farewell party on the Queen Mary. Oh, bless him. I'm going right upstairs and bake him a nice cake in case he gets hungry on the trip. Or in case the ship needs more ballast. <laughs> oh, hush with you, Professor. Come upstairs and talk to me while I bake a cake. And if you're a good boy, I'll give you a picture to hang over that hole in your wall. No, thank you. I don't want to cover that hole. It overlooks a beautiful view. Why, all you can see out of there is the city dump. Compared to my room, it's a beautiful view. <laughs> see you tomorrow night on the boat, Jamie. Goodbye. Bye. Jane? What, honey? Well, while Richard's away, maybe Al has a friend who will date you. That's very sweet, Irma, but I don't think the warden would let him out just for that. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hi, Al. Hello, Al, honey. What are you looking so happy about? Chicken, you are looking at a millionaire. Oh, Jane, did you hear that? Al's a millionaire. Al, there are three people in this room, one of whom is a very big skeptic. Well, explain. Happen to have a, a big, big deal. deal. Yeah. Oh, Al, what is it? It's confidential. Al, believe me, I'll keep your secret. In fact, I'm not even going to hear it. Goodbye, all. Sarcastic shrew. Would like to tame her. Oh, Al, don't look so... Don't look so sad. Don't let... Look, don't let Jane hurt your feelings. Tell me your new deal. I'm not a septic. Well, all right. It, it's a... Oh, Al, I think it's wonderful. It can't miss. Chicken, I like you to have confidence in me, but you go overboard. <laughs> Must hear the deal first. It's a report card with a railroad ticket printed on the back. So when a kid gets bad marks, he can leave town. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. You know, a, a thing like that can stamp out all juveniles. <laughs> ah, chicken, what's the use? I just heard myself say it, and it's nothing. And Jane's right. I'm nothing. Oh, but, Al, to me, you're everything. No, chicken, it's about time I face facts. I can't get any place in New York. Well, Al, uh, maybe you should go to a larger city. <laughs> this is the biggest chicken But it's no good for me This town has got me down I gotta move on Need new worlds to conquer Oh, Al, you're just depressed You'll feel better when you go to the party tomorrow night And see Richard off to London Richard's going to London? Uh-huh Hey, chicken, that sounds like the spot for me In that fog, a guy can get away with anything I mean, uh, <laughs> nobody is poking their nose in his business Oh, but Al, you'll be on the other side of the ocean And I'll miss you so Every time I go to Coney Island and I see something washed up on the beach, I'll think of you. Tender thought, chicken. 
Now, all I got to figure out is how I can get to London without paying. And there's only one man who can help me. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Got to get to England on the Queen Mary. No funds. What's my move? Contact Saltwater Sam, who works very close with Limehouse Louie? Well, how will I know him, Joe? When I go down to the Queen Mary, I'll see a head sticking out of a porthole? Yeah, but there's a lot of portholes on the Queen Mary. Throw a rock at the head. If it doesn't duck, it'll be Saltwater Sam. <laughs> Used to work at the Coney Island baseball concession. Oh, yeah, I remember him. The guy was always complaining his feet were hurting him. <laughs> yeah, but Joe, how, how will he get me over? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. He'll pack me in a sealed can filled to the top with oil? But, Joe, how will I breathe? What if I don't? The right is for nothing. <laughs> no, Joe, thanks for the effort, but do not wish to travel as a sardine. Goodbye, Joe. Chicken, Joe gave me the idea. I'm going to stow away on the Queen Mary. Oh, but, Al, they're liable to catch you. Got to take that chance. Oh, but I'll miss you. Chicken, our future lies beyond the seas. Who knows? I may go to the continent, pick up some polish, contacts, maybe even a title. Imagine me coming back, a prince. Oh, what a thrilling day that'll be. A and I'll be waiting for you on the pier saying, Here, Prince! Here, Prince! <laughs> Ladies, did you know that swan soap actually differs from other soaps? Sure, feel a cake of swan. It feels smoother. As Susie Swan says, it's a smoothie. It's a smoothie, it's a cake of swan. You can feel that super creamed blend. You can feel the difference in it, you can tell it in a minute. It's a smoothie, that swan. Yes, ladies, the way swan feels is a direct result of swan's super creamed blend. Just run your fingertips over the surface of a cake of swan. Feel the smoothness. See how Swan's Super Creamed Blend makes Swan differ from other soaps. Then feel Swan's suds. They feel richer, creamier, and Swan's mild suds protect your hands. Sure, when you're through, look at your hands. You'll see they're left with a smooth, soft, young look. And Swan's Super Creamed Suds rinse away so completely, your dishes don't need wiping. You bet. Swan soap means faster dishwashing and protection for your hands. Thanks to Swan's exclusive super creamed blend. Well, we're all set to go down to the Queen Mary to see Richard off. Believe me, Jane Stacy is one great actress. Hmm. I won't show him what my real feelings are. I'll be casual, indifferent, blasé. Think I'll take four handkerchiefs along in case I crack. But I won't. I can control my emotions. I'll just say, uh, have a nice trip, Richard. And he'll kiss me. He'll kiss me. And I'll report immediately to the captain and ask to join the crew at no salary. <laughs> oh, what's the use of kidding myself? As far as we women are concerned, baseball is not the national sport. <laughs> and... As if I didn't have enough on my mind, Irma and Al are acting very strangely. They're behaving in a very offbeat manner. Irma, look, look we better get to the pier, honey. The boat will be leaving soon. It... What's going on between you and Al? Uh, don't worry about us, Jane. We'll meet you there. you meet me there? I don't understand. You two aren't up to anything. Oh, no. And why are you staring at each other? Uh... You heard that expression, drink to me only with thine eyes? We're on a binge. Well, I was only trying to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't got time to discuss it now. I'll see you on the boat and be sure that nothing goes wrong. Goodbye. Okay, chicken, we gotta act fast. Gotta promote an angle that'll take care of my passage on the Queen Mary. Al, I, I, I've got a thought, but I don't think you'll like it. Speak up, chicken. Many a great thought has come from the mouth of a child. Why don't you work your way across? Go away, kid. You bother me. <laughs> well, Al, Al, I don't know what other, what other way there is of going, but one thing I insist on. If you're going to go, it has to be honest. See what you mean, chicken. You can trust me. Got the angle. 
We'll stow away in a lifeboat. Oh, but, Al, that's not honest. What do you mean, chicken? Does anybody else go in a lifeboat? No. Well, then, if I'm not taking anybody else's place, it's honest. <laughs> oh, I apologize, Al, darling. You know, for a moment it seemed crooked, but when you explain it, it, it still seems crooked. But you say it so honestly that I know it's not crooked. <laughs> like that trait in you, chicken. If you were only the district attorney, this would be a pro progressive city for a man like me. Now, chicken, getting into the lifeboat is simple, but the main thing is, how do I get food and drink? Well, that's simple. I'll just ring for room service. <laughs> chicken, don't you understand? No one must know I'm in the lifeboat, so it must depend upon you to get the food to me. Oh. After two days, I'll come out and they can't throw me off. But, Al, uh, how will I do it? Easy, chicken. So they won't suspect me when I get on board, you bring a suitcase full of the necessities of life, Walk casually along the upper deck where the lifeboats are, slip me the suitcase, blow me a kiss, and then walk nonchalantly back to the pier. But, uh, Al, how will I know what lifeboat you're in? Well, put question. You walk along and knock twice on each life lifeboat, like this. When you hear two knocks back, you know I'm under the canvas. All right, Al. Uh, chicken, feel the need of a rehearsal. Right. Now, you're on the boat, and yeah. someone comes up to you and says, What are you doing with that suitcase? What do you say? Do you think I'd let my boyfriend in that lifeboat starve? <laughs> Chicken, don't you see? They mustn't know I'm in the lifeboat. Oh. We'll tell you what to say. You are a fashion designer, and you're taking some sketches over because you're putting on a fashion show, as you understand, a lot of women over there have nothing to wear. Got it? Uh, got it. Just to be sure I'm sailing with the wind behind me, repeat it for me. Oh, well, that's silly. Give it back to me, chicken. All right, Al. I'm putting on a show over there for a group of women who are sketches, and they're going to be a show without wearing anything. <laughs> now, aren't you sorry you asked me to repeat it? Chicken, forget it. We'll give you a simple phrase you can't miss. If anyone talks to you, say you're going over with a convention of the Daughters of the American Revolution. You got it? Yes, I'm going over with the Daughters of the American Revolution. Perfect. See you on the boat. And don't forget the suitcase and the two knocks for a signal. Okay, uh, Daughters of American Revolution, suitcase and two knocks. Well, I'm in Richard's stateroom on the Queen Mary. He's driving me crazy. He's taking one last look at the New York skyline. And I'm a girl. I'd like him to take one last look at my waistline. But he's not going to leave before I plant a good kiss on him. Richard. Uh, what is it, Jane? Uh, haven't you forgotten something? No, I don't think so. I've got my uh, tickets. No, uh, no, I, I, I didn't mean that. Well, there's my trunk and the large suitcase and my, uh, my visa. Richard, I I'm not talking about the things you're taking with you. I'm speaking about something you're leaving behind. <laughs> Oh, I know what you mean, Jane. Oh, you're a darling to think of it. The kennel said they'd take care of my dog. <laughs> Richard, for your information, I cannot bark. <laughs> but you're also leaving me behind. Oh, Jane, I've been an awful fool. Oh, I apologize. Oh, well, don't waste time apologizing. The boat's sailing. Come on over here, darling. Oh, Richard. Oh, murder. Whoever you are, just slip it under the door and go away. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Richard. I came to wish you a good trip. And I came along with the professor to give you my best wishes, too, Richard, darling. Oh, thank you, folks. Uh, Janie, we're not interrupting anything, are we? Oh, no, no. Where are Al and Irma? Oh, they'll be along. Richard, here's a little going-away present for you. It's a cake. Well, thank you. It's my mother's recipe. She used to make it for my father. Richard, you'll be interested to know that Mrs. O'Reilly was an orphan when she was two. <laughs> oh, go on with you, Professor. He's such a boy at heart, always trying to amuse me with little games. Like when we came aboard, he wanted to play pirates, blindfold me and let me walk the gangplank. <laughs> so I'll think of something else. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you're here, Irma. I don't want to sail without saying goodbye to you. Uh, where's Al? Oh, uh, he'll see you later, Richard. Uh, uh, like in a couple of days. What? 
Oh, oh, have a nice trip, Richard. And when you get to England, will you stop off at Oxford and bring me some of those shoes that the students make there? <laughs> oh, Irma, don't be ridiculous. Say, honey... What's the idea of the suitcase? Oh, I'll tell you later, Jane. Uh, I want to take a look around the boat. Oh, bon voyage, Richard. That's French. I, I didn't want to use it because this is an English boat, but you'll understand. <laughs> Thank you, Irma, and, and goodbye. Gee, now I've got to find the lifeboat where Al is. Well, miss, are you going to take the tip trip across with us? Uh, no, General, just partway. What? I mean, my boyfriend. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is a nice boat, General. I'm not a general. I'm a captain. Oh, well, you work hard and you'll get a promotion. <laughs> oh, where, uh, where are the lifeboats? Right up here on the top deck. May I carry your bag, miss? Oh, no, thank you. Is this your first trip abroad? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going over with my daughters to start a revolution. <laughs> what? What are you knocking on that lifeboat for, miss? Well, it's good luck to knock on wood. <laughs> Sir, haven't you any work to do, like throwing out the anchor or checking the oars? I have a crew to do that. Mm. Now what are you knocking for? Uh, I'm sorry, I thought I heard someone say, come in. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Lady, will you please stop knocking on those lifeboats? All right, I will. I don't wish to be rude, but it's just against the rules. Yeah, would you like a cigarette? Uh, no, thank you. Well, if you don't mind, I'll smoke my pipe. What's a captain without a pipe? I'll just knock out some of this tobacco. <laughs> what was that? Your pipe made an echo. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I think there's somebody in that lifeboat. Oh, no, if there was anybody in there, Al would chase him out. <laughs> Who's Al? My boyfriend, the man in the lifeboat. What? Mr. Chicken, I don't know who you're talking to, but tell him to blow. <laughs> Whoever's in there, come out. Ain't nobody in here but us oars, folks. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, a stowaway. Now, just a minute, Your Honor. I got influence. I know the captain. Oh, you do? Uh, Al, uh, let me handle Al, this, what? Chicken. The captain happens to be a very good friend of mine. I see. Al, Please, I Chicken. To... I was hired by the captain to inspect the lifeboats. Uh, Al, you What see... is it, Chicken? This is the captain. <laughs> well, Captain, this is a fine way to treat an old friend. <laughs> Didn't you recognize me? No. But I do know that you'll be thrown off this ship. You could be locked up for a thing like this. Now, wait a second there. I'm a friend of Mr. Richard Rhinelander's. Oh, yes? Well, we'll just see about this. Come with me. All ashore that's going ashore. Oh, gee. Richard, we have to go now. Please take good care of yourself, darling. I will, Jane. Have a good trip, Richard. Oh, bless you, my boy. Now, don't wait, Janey. Give him a great big kiss. Yes, it's an old custom to kiss people while leaving goodbye. Oh, I didn't know that. I must get tickets to some place. <laughs> Save your money, Mrs. O'Reilly. You could go around the world six times and I wouldn't shake hands with you. <laughs> oh, hush up, Professor. Go on, Janey. Give him a big kiss. I think I will. And thank you. I think you've been a grand audience all afternoon. Oh, forget it, Richard. I'll mail you a kiss. Come in. I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Rhinelander. I'm Captain Pearson. I found a stowaway who claims he's a friend of yours. Irma and Al. Oh, well, you see, Jane, Al wanted to make contacts. Oh, and he saw... Oh, don't ashore. bother. Don't bother explaining. We're getting off this boat and you're not getting out of my sight, the two of you. Goodbye, Richard, darling. Bon voyage. Goodbye, Jane. So long, gang. Take Goodbye. good care of yourself. All ashore that's going ashore. Come on. Come on, hurry up. Follow me into this elevator. Come on, Professor, quick. Take it easy. Mrs. O'Reilly has my arm and she hasn't hurried since Bull Run. <laughs> Come on, now. Now, let, let's make sure that everybody's here. Al, you, Krip 
My goodness. Where's Irma? Well, she was just here. She must have taken the wrong door. Last call. All ashore that's going ashore. Oh, good heavens, she'll be stranded on the boat. Well, we've got to find her. Everybody look. Everybody look in different directions. Oh, come on. Uh, come along, Mrs. O'Reilly. Run. I can't, Professor. It's these new long skirts. Why do you bother with long skirts when it's a long hat you need? Come on. <laughs> Hurry up, Al. Hurry. Steward. Yes, lady? We've been looking high and low for a friend of ours. She's a blonde in a red suit. A blonde in a red suit? Huh? Oh, yes. I believe she's the last person we let off the boat before we sailed. Before we sailed? Al! We're moving! Uh, isn't that the young lady you mean waving down there on the pier? <laughs> Have you heard? Have you heard? Ladies, you can save 50% on a modern heavy-gauge aluminum saucepan, just the kind of a two-quart saucepan with a cover that's so useful in your kitchen. The saucepan is of fine 18-gauge aluminum with a no-twist handle, and both the hand and cover knob are made of no-burn Bakelite. This handsome saucepan is worth $2.00. But you can get it for only one dollar. It's the famous Regal Aluminum Ware, the really perfect modern kitchen ware. Yes, and they're made with inside sunray finish. So bright, so beautiful. Now here's all you do to get them. Send in box tops or wrappers from any two of these Lever products. Lux Flakes, Rinso, Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Silver Dust, Spry, or Swan. And when you buy them, you can get handy order blanks as well as the other information you need. Orders will be sent postpaid within three weeks. The offer expires August 1st, 1948. It is subject to state and local regulations. Just send your money together with box tops or wrappers from two Lever products and your name and address to Lever Homemakers Club, Box 1, New York City. the pilot boat, except for the fact that I got soaked to the skin and so sick I couldn't walk. It was a delightful experience. But I haven't forgiven Irma for the trick she and Al tried to pull, so I said, Irma, what in the world ever made you believe that Al would do any better in London than he does here? And Irma said, well, Al is very handy with tools, and I heard that the London bridges are falling down. Maybe he could fix them. <laughs> You know something? I'm living with someone beyond repair, and that's my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, listen again to... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Ladies, listen. The shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please keep on saving every drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Sprite. Keep the light and high. Yes, there's a reason why Spry makes grand cakes. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be sure of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake making success, try Spry, the pure all vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry, S P R Y. Rely on Spry. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 